Welcome to the Rigging Farm YouTube channel. In this video, we'll show you how much we've spent to feed our pigs during the first 10 weeks we've had them, and how we're able to get an estimate of their weight without putting them on a scale. We were down to our last bag and a half of swine feed and also getting low on chicken and rabbit feed. So we went to the local feed store to get a thousand pounds of swine feed and a hundred pounds each of chicken and rabbit feed. We'll also grab a brand new pallet as a bonus. Surely we'll find a good use for that soon. Back at the farm, we unloaded everything into our shipping container for storage. In the first 10 weeks of having pigs, they've gone through 1,100 pounds of feed at $10.65 per 50 pound bag. So that works out to $234.30 in feed costs so far. There's a simple formula to estimate the weight of a pig. Take the measurement in inches around their torso just behind their front legs and multiply that number by itself. Multiply that by the length of the pig from between its ears and to the base of its tail, and then divide the total by 400. The resulting number will give you their approximate weight in pounds. Morcia was about 92 pounds. Guanchale was about 71 pounds. Chicharron was about 78 pounds. Prosciutto was about 56 pounds. And finally, Luau was about 69 pounds. Lua was only 15 pounds and the others were about 20 pounds when we got them, so that's approximately 271 pounds of weight gained at a 4 to 1 feed to weight gain ratio at this point. The total cost of the pigs and their feed is $584.30, so when you divide that by their total weight, they have cost us $1.60 a pound. Butchering them yields about 25% of waste, so their hanging weight would cost us about $2.12 a pound. We're keeping Morcia and Guanchale as breeders, and the males will start to gain weight more rapidly in the next few months, so these numbers are kind of irrelevant to us. Either way, it's always fun to do a little pig math. The chickens and ducks like to eat, but sometimes we have chickens that fly over the fence when we toss them their feed. It's always a chore to get them back over to safety. Here's a spot that likes to hold water after it rains, and the ducks love it. We tried feeding the birds some Grub Terra chicken treats, and three of the chickens freaked out and flew over the fence. Check out our video review of that product if you're interested in seeing how all of our animals responded to it. It's going to be great when we install the new fencing that's seven feet high next month. Hopefully these birds will stay contained. Later that night, we were able to find and catch the chickens outside of the fence and put them onto the ramp leading into their coop. This one was being a dummy and wouldn't go inside. We tried to help. Five minutes later, she finally decided to go inside the coop. Let's take a peek before closing the door. We needed a way to run power to our pellet grill without tripping over a cord constantly, so we drilled a hole in the new deck near the outlet and ran an extension cord under the deck to get to the grill. Now we can grill and smoke our food without accidentally dropping it when trying to get back into the house. Santa brought us a brand new GoPro Hero 9 for Christmas, so our future videos will be filmed with it. Subscribe if you don't already to see the difference in video quality. We had some rain this week, and we figured three days of sunshine afterwards would be enough time to dry the ground. Obviously, that was a horrible assumption. Not only did the skid steer get stuck, again, but the grapple just fell off and rolled onto the hydraulic hoses and damaged them. The rental place was closed until the day they were coming to pick up the equipment, so the time with the grapple was officially over. After using the excavator to get it unstuck, we switched over to the bucket. Another few minutes of work was done the next day before getting stuck again. But not before a big chunk of the bucket snapped off while doing some light duty work with mud and running into a small hidden stump. Here's the view of the future pasture from our back deck. Hopefully we'll be able to use our tractor to finish removing the debris before doing some final grading with a box blade. After that, we'll till the ground and add some seed to this area that's about an acre and a half. Once that's established, we'll look into getting a bred cow and calf pair. The mama will have her other calf after about nine months. In another year, the older calf will have grown into a beef steer. 
By that time, we should have the other side of our property cleared to give them another four acres, and we'll get another bred cow and calf pair. Since the skid steer was out of commission, it was time to work on adding more fencing for the pigs. T-posts, polywire, insulators, and tools were loaded into the grapple of the tractor, and we headed towards the pigs. We added T-posts with insulators to start working on the outer perimeter of the complete pig pasture. Great! More trash on our property! This area is near the creek on the western side of our property. It's heavily wooded, and the pigs will absolutely love it. After all the fencing is up, they will have about two acres of space divided into multiple paddocks. They'll be rotated from one paddock into another every week or two. There are plenty of bugs and a variety of vegetation for them to eat in addition to their swine feed. These mushrooms are a good example of something that grows naturally in the woods. They appear to be oyster mushrooms. Comment below if you can either confirm that or correctly identify them. After a few hours, all of the posts and insulators were in place and the lower strand of poly wire was run around the perimeter. The next day, we started on the top strand and got about three quarters of the way finished before running out of wire. All of the local stores were sold out, so we ordered another half mile of poly wire and we'll finish up when it arrives. The pigs seem to be pretty happy with their current setup, so they'll be fine. Right before working on this video, we went out to check on the pigs one last time, and they must have had a ton of fun in that mud. Morcia's face is completely covered. That girl knows how to party. Chicharron finally noticed us and came over to see if we had anything delicious to share with him. Prosciutto was just hanging out at the water barrel for a drink. Thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate you following us along on our farming journey. Hopefully you enjoyed learning some pig math. Come back again to see all the progress we make here on Riggin Farm. We'll see you next time!